What's going on YouTube? It's Rai Rai here and in this Battlefield Hardline video I'm going to be giving you tutorial tips and tricks on how to utilize the best vehicle in Battlefield Hardline and I believe that's the transport helicopter. Reason why this is the best vehicle in this game is because, well, as you know, in Battlefield Hardline compared to previous Battlefield games, it's less of a military game and more of a cops and robbers game, meaning you don't have tanks, you don't have, you know, a ton of engineers running around all strapped with some sort of rockets, uh, you don't have vehicles basically and, and things that can take you out that quickly. So, when utilized properly with the right squad, using the right type of loadouts, the right type of communication, this vehicle can be dominant in not only Hotwire, but other game modes as well. The videos you're going to be seeing here are mostly Hotwire because I believe running this in Hotwire will dominate any Hotwire match. But the tips and tricks you're going to learn here can be used in games like Conquest Large and other games as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the tutorial. Now if you have a good pilot that knows how to fly, you got a couple gunners that have uh, especially in Hotwire, the M3M machine gun unlocked, and you have a couple dedicated, uh, you know, players that are using uh, uh, the mechanics repair tool ability, and even maybe a grenade launcher, or if they're picking one up, if you you know pick one up at a at a sedan or a coupe or something like that, uh, an RPG or a Stinger missile, you'll be able to dominate Hotwire matches and really just any match in any game type using the uh, a good squad based tactics with the transport chopper. Now, let me go ahead before I get into that and talk to the scrubs out there that don't understand what I'm talking about in how to properly use the transport chopper. Scrubs, listen up. The transport chopper is not your personal mode of transportation. Never, ever, 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 even if there's no vehicles for you to take on the map, should you take the transport chopper and just fly it over somewhere and then hop out of it, leaving the transport chopper to fall to its death. That's the worst thing you can do in Battlefield Hardline as far as the vehicles are concerned because you're basically saying, I'm going to use this transport chopper to go and grab this, this, this car over here and drive off and leave the transport chopper sitting there. A lot of times it doesn't even get destroyed, and if an enemy team is smart enough, they'll get it, they'll take it, and now they might have two transport choppers taking out any vehicles in their path. And that is just a big no-no. You never, ever do that. It's the best vehicle in this game, uh, in my opinion, and a lot of experts, I'm sure, agree with me on this, when it's utilized correctly. So you don't want to just go ahead and, and basically waste it. You know what? If you, if you don't have a vehicle, spawn on a, on a friendly. Spawn on someone in your squad. Don't just grab it, fly it over, and take it. To a, to a flag and then let it sit there and die when it's a vehicle that can really be utilized to win the match. And stalling, for example, to get players out. I had a match, and you'll see some of the clips I have here, where I'm in the gunner seat. Now, I'm a good gunner. I have a high-end machine gun uh, that I've unlocked. I'm looking to take up, and a guy goes and flies to the top of the building and just sits there spamming the get out, get out button because he wants his buddies that are in the repair chairs and the side doors to go ahead and, and get into the guns instead. Well, you know what, idiot? Just go ahead and fly, and let's see what happens and get out there. You're wasting time by sitting there, you know, at the top of a roof trying to get us to bail out. I'm not going to bail out on top of a roof where I'm nowhere near the action and then have to jump down. That's ridiculous. I'm in here. I'm in a gun. Let's get into the action and fly around. So just because you're in the, the pilot seat of the transport chopper doesn't mean you should have autonomous power over anybody else in the chopper as to say who gets to sit where. It doesn't work that way. If you got guys willing to be in the chopper, willing to fly with you, willing to repair you, willing to shoot uh, a heavy machine gun and take out vehicles, then by all means get in there, you know, go fly around and see what you can do rather than just trying to, you know, get them to bail. A lot of times anyways, guys will bail out and your buddies can then switch to those seats and you'll get there anyway. So, but sitting there stalling for time, spamming the get out button doesn't work and just stop doing it. Another thing to consider is when the chopper is getting low on health, don't just automatically bail out, especially when it's full. It, a lot of times when it's full, that means somebody in that chopper is going to have a repair tool or switch to repair in, in, in from one of the guns in the repair seat, and they're going to get the chopper healed back up. There's no reason for you to automatically bail, and even if you don't bail, so what? It's one death. You know, guys in this game worry way too much about their kill-to-death ratio. They say they don't. They say it's not a kill-to-death ratio game. You see it on the forums all the time. But they do worry about it because otherwise, why are you just automatically bailing out of vehicles 
when it's at you know five percent when you know there's guys in there that are healing and rep repping the vehicle so you know and, and even if you do bail out of it if you bail out too early and the vehicle is able to then be repaired by the enemy team they're going to go ahead and pick it up trust me my squad my guys when we play these game types if we see an enemy chopper you know fall fall down from the sky and land we are going after not to destroy it but to rep it and get in it and use it against the enemy team and then it doesn't spawn for your team so now you don't just have one you know enemy transport chopper to worry about you had two and basically that's a death sentence for any team trying to win a hot wire match so please scrubs i beg of you if there's any video that you watch of mine and take heed and take you know something from it let it be this one please god i hope this gets out to the battlefield hardline community because i see all too often people just using this this vehicle incorrectly and it just drives me and my squad mates bonkers sometimes because we're like why is this guy doing this why is this guy flying this way why is this guy you know bailing out of the chopper when there's three of us in it and just stuff like that and it drives me sick sometimes to see how guys are incorrectly using this vehicle and it can be so much fun when it's used properly and correctly so let's go ahead and get into that now let's get into some of the stuff you can do as a pilot as a gunner as a guy sitting in a third or fourth seat to be able to really help out the your your team here and utilize this vehicle properly okay so what's the makeup of your squad that you're gonna wanna have in the chopper kinda how do you wanna configure that and and do that to best utilize the chopper here well you should have at least a couple players preferably the gunners and maybe another player in your squad that are running as mechanic really if they're sitting in the helicopter they should be running as a mechanic especially if you plan on having that helicopter survive and being in the match for long periods of time with that transport chopper active you wanna have a repair tool you wanna get that that second you know upgrade that that fast repair up so you can basically take any damage from stingers and RPGs that might be locked onto you and you can basically take it and fly to safety and handle it and still keep that chopper in action um, that's really what you want to do if you're sitting anywhere but the pilot seat you want to be able to have that ability to switch up repair or have designated guys repairing the vehicle as quickly as possible now I'd say in the other slot what you might want to do is is carry something like a uh, grenade launcher or if you're able to spawn in at on a vehicle uh, one of the coupes or sedans for example like I mentioned before and grab a stinger missile as an anti-air defense or even an RPG you'll be able to use those now you gotta be careful you can't just switch to your repair tool and do it because you'll drop the RPG but kinda maybe sit in that 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 side door and use those uh, to your advantage as well so um, that's a good way to kind of set it up as far as the gunners if you're sitting in the seats uh, you know is concerned you want to be able to to rep to gun to switch up if you have to do things like that now as the pilot what should you do what what kind of techniques can you incorporate as a pilot to be a better pilot well one of the things I see a lot of pilots do that I believe is incorrect the way they fly in hot wire is they take the helicopter and they fly too high in the air the further you are away from your target the less of your shots from your gunners are gonna hit their target making it easier for vehicles to stay alive because normally you know you're gonna come across vehicles in this game that have one or two guys repping them and if they're repairing the vehicle and you're shooting from way too high up not enough shots you're hitting it you're basically just wasting your your time trying to take that vehicle out so you want to be able to fly low fast match the speed and 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 get a proper angle for your gunners to take these vehicle out and that could take some practice the flying I'm doing here in this video took time it takes time it, it took time flying these helicopters around in games going back to battlefield 3 so it could take a lot of time and a lot of practice to get the proper flying techniques you need experiment with the different configurations for your buttons see which one works best for you once you do just get in and spend time you can even go in like an empty server and hop in it and just fly around and and try to learn to fly around and, and follow the roads and things like this but as you see here I'm flying low I'm flying fast my guys are able to get kills with the with the machine guns with the M3M because I'm basically setting them up for a good firing platform and that's really your number one concern as a pilot in these vehicles is giving your gunners a good firing platform now the gunners if you don't have the M3M and somebody else in your chopper does 
you need to switch out and basically just become a repair guy and let the guys with the M3Ms or, or even a minigun, for example, switch into that seat. Simply because you want the most firepower going. I'm always going to set up my firing for my for my best gunner. I'm going to basically give my best gun to the firing platform. So if my buddy spawns in and says, hey, I'm on your left gun, which the second seat is your left gun, the third seat's your right gun. If he says, oh, I'm on your left gun and I got some scrub on the right gun that's just firing like crazy and he's got a normal machine gun, he hasn't purchased the upgrade, he's not going to get many shots <laughs> as far as I'm concerned because my best gun's going to be on my left side. I'm going to try and get a, a good firing platform set up for my left side and not for my right. And that's another thing that some of these random pilots you get into you know, have to understand is you might have your buddy on the left gun, but if his gun is that... that the standard gun and not the upgraded M3M, which he could hear that the right gun might be the M3M, well, you need to switch off and say, hey, buddy, go purchase the upgrade because we're not getting kills this way. We're not destroying these vehicles fast enough, and we're not winning the match because of it. I need to switch and get the guy on the right gun the shots because the guy on the left gun just doesn't have the firepower to take these vehicles out fast enough. And that's something you need to be able to do is communicate with your gunners, understand what your gunners have going on, what they're doing, where they're doing. And basically, if you're calling out, you know, we're going after Charlie Flag, your gunners can look for Charlie, and then you can do it. Now, if you have, let's say, both guns are M3M guns, well, even better, because now you don't really have to favor a gun. You can basically kind of switch back and forth. If one of your gunners, if your left side gunner says, hey, you know what, I'm overheated, or I'm about to overheat, well, then you can just basically turn, get your right side gun to get shots on them now. And that's a really great way to take out vehicles. When you can kind of get both guns alternating onto the target, um, shooting at the target, it really makes it difficult for these vehicles to kind of stay, you know, uh, uh, stay alive that long. Okay, so what do you do when you have Stinger missiles and enemy fire coming at you? Well, basically here is where math is your best friend. The, each player that has a Stinger missile in an RPG has three shots at you. You want to be able to basically count those shots and have guys rep them and understand that you need to be at at least 51%, I believe it's 51%, to take a hit from a Stinger missile. So if you get hit by a Stinger missile and it takes out 51%, you guys need to basically get on the repairs, rep you over the 50 you know, 1%, preferably up to about 70% or above so you don't get disabled. Um, but basically get you above that level so you can take another hit. It's okay if you take hits so long as you don't go, you know, the ship doesn't get destroyed. So basically in this case, your flares or ECM jammers are going to be your best friend. Don't pop them too early. Wait till they you hear that shot, that, that the warning system that the shot's been launched. Then you hit it. If you can avoid that one, now they only have two missiles left. You can take another hit. And once you take that other hit, you then have to get out of dodge and get guys repairing you. A lot of times the gunners don't switch up soon enough. It's best to have two gunners repairing because the repairs can be pretty slow on this vehicle. So you want to have two gunners or two people repairing uh, when you know fire's coming in. At that point, taking out the vehicles is not a priority. The priority is making sure you can withstand the Stinger missile barrage and then get to safety and basically fly low, fly undercover, and get out of there. And if you can, if you don't fly high, if you fly high, you're giving anybody within range a free shot at you. You want to be able to fly low, kind of basically use any cover on the map to get yourself, you know, uh, away from their line of sight. And then basically just heal that thing up and get it ready in case you take another hit. You'll be able to take those hits. They'll be out of missiles. You'll still keep the bird in the fight. Now, a couple other tips I have for when you're using the gunner. Uh, burst fire to avoid overheating. Know, when you, you know, know your gun. Know when it's going to overheat. Those M3Ms can overheat pretty quickly. So you want to make sure you're burst firing and or just not laying on the gun too much. It's almost best to just lay off it, take a quick second to let it recharge, and then go at it again rather than just laying on it till it overheats and then having to wait several seconds for that gun to get back into the fight, giving the, the enemy time to repair a vehicle. Um, also, you want to be able to kind of learn the lead a little bit. And this is where, you know, leading a vehicle is more difficult when you're flying higher than when you're flying lower. So as a pilot, you want to make sure you're flying lower to the ground because then you're, you're don't, your gunners don't have to lead the vehicle so much. More of their shots are hitting targets, killing enemies in the vehicle, destroying the vehicles, and then earning your team a win. Well, that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit like and subscribe. And until next time, this is Rai Rai. Take care.